Right, then let's go. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another week here at the RGM Experience Podcast. For those of you that don't know what this thing's all about, uh, is we like to delve into the grassroots music industry and beyond and find interesting people uh, along the way to share their stories with you all. Okay, so today, ladies and gentlemen, we've got my old mucker, Nick Tudes, eh, mate? I have flower, nice to see you. Lovely to um, see you again. Happy yeah, New Year and all that. Happy New Year. It's been a while, hasn't it? When was the last time I saw you, was it? When we had page 45 on in Sheffield, I think, in real life. Mate, last point. time we saw you was when we did that night for you at Jimmy's in Manchester. Ah, shit, yeah. yeah all November that. 19. Yeah, that was like three years ago-ish. Four years ago now, yeah. yeah. What was it with key operators? Were they on it? Wiki operators, that's it, yeah. Harriet Rowe. Yeah, Wiki operators. Yeah, oh, nice one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been a while, mate, hasn't it? It's been a while, mate, yeah. Uh, and uh, and I've seen you as an artist uh, blossom into a solo artist now after uh, after you had all your troubles with a band that will come through, because I know you've you've been on a bit of a journey, haven't you, through your life, mate? It's, um, I don't know about <laughs> blossoming into a solo artist, yeah. <laughs> okay. But I think it's just, um, it's needs must, mate. Yeah. Because I couldn't go down that band avenue. I mean, you'll know my story anyway. Yeah, yeah. But I couldn't go down that band avenue anymore because they just let you down. Yeah. No, I know. It was, just, it was just a constant. Well, you've been in a band, haven't you? Yeah. You've done that. Oh, yeah. Just trying to get three or four people in the same place, five people in the same place at the same time to rehearse and not have something on every time you want to do something. is an absolute ball ache, isn't it, to keep going? And that's it. It does. It gets like that. It becomes a ball ache and you lose track of why you were doing it in the first place, which was... You enjoy playing music, yeah. and then it becomes tiring because you're always chasing somebody. Yeah, you know, like, oh, God, can't be asked. So it's just easier to do it on your own now and crack on, eh? I suppose. Well, you can. I mean, in the olden in the olden days, right. when you used to get a gig offer, it could take you anything up to nine days to confirm it. Yeah, but like, I'm just gonna wait for the bass player. He's seen the message, but yeah. the little fucker's not replying. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he's seen it. Um, and he'll be asking for permission off his wife, yeah. who needs to cover childcare in 11, 11 months' time. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas now, when I get offered a gig, <laughs> or if I'm chasing a gig, I can confirm it in nine seconds. Yeah, nice. So yeah. I know, yeah, I'm there. And I usually say yes. So, yes, yeah, it's it, it better in that respect, but I would rather be in a band. Yeah, no, I, I, get, it. I get it, and and that and and your passion for music is still there, isn't it? You know, you just you you, you just can't not be on stage and just do your tunes, can you? No, that's it. I think when um, I when I was younger and I was just starting out, there used to be a couple of bands in Brid that were like real old dudes, and I used to take the piss out of them. <laughs> look, look at them still doing it at forty. <laughs> and you're like, what? I'm fifty two now. You know what I mean? But I will. But now I totally respect that because yeah. those blokes, even though they were maybe doing ACD covers or doing their own stuff, yeah, I totally respect that now because they obviously couldn't let that go. Mm. And I can't, it's like, I can't not think about music. Mm. The where's the next tune coming from? Where's the next gig coming from? Yeah. What's the next single cover going to look like? And you like to sort of switch off, but when it's in you and yeah. it's just like the fabric of who you are, it just, it's real, isn't it? It, it is. And I, I feel a similar, a similar kind of way. I'm, I'm not that arsed about playing live anymore, but I've kind of like fallen into this RGM thing. This is where I get my kicks from and passions from. Yeah. And, and sharing other people's music and having an opinion on these videos. I just I just love being in and around the music industry still. Yeah. And after all these years when I hadn't, you know, picked up a guitar. I've got one over yeah. there. Um, but you know, it's Do you ever have a little tinkle? Of course I do. Yeah, of course I do. Yeah. Still play those old fucking still treat yourself to a bit of Wonderwall every now and again. <laughs> You're still playing that, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it, 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 I could play that the best song ever because I, th I, th I think I've only been playing it 20 years now. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, the first question I wanted to ask you, mate, I know you're yeah. from Bridlington and we'll, we'll come to Bridlington in a bit, but why do you spot Ipswich? Oh, mate, what a question. <laughs> right, quick answer to it. Right, I'm... I've been you, don't have to be quick. you don't have to be quick. It, it can oh. be as detailed and as horrible as you like. Right, well, talking about Ipswich, you know it's horrible then. <laughs> right, when I was... You remember the little Panini stickers? Yes. Yeah. So when I was three, um, I picked... My brother must have had a, like, got, got, not got, 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 not got, all that sort of gear. He must have had a pack, or it was in the playground at school, and I picked up an Ipswich sticker. Mm. It was Trevor Wymark, and I liked the kit. Nice. They did have nice kits. 
they had lovely kits, mate. But can you imagine if I'd have picked up Yeovil or somebody <laughs> like that or Kilmarnock? You know what I mean? But it was Ipswich and it was like blue and white and that was it. That's been my, that was my first love. I mean, music, oh. huge to me, but me, um, Ipswich Town was my first love. Like from three years onwards to now, yeah. they're my team. No, no family connections. Yeah. Nothing down there at all. <laughs> um, I tend to go watch them if I do, sort of like when they come up here to the north and what have you. Yeah. I went up to Middlesbrough the other week and what, went to Hillsborough a couple of months before that. So I try and try and get tickets to come and see them up here. Mm. But you could go spend weekend in Spain and it's cheaper than going to Ipswich for a home game. Yeah. So I could have, I maybe should have picked Hull City or <laughs> something like that, but it was just fate. It was that particular sticker, that particular day. And I was three years old. I thought, that's me. Oh, well, that, 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 I just, that, um, that's been niggling at me for probably <laughs> years. So I just thought I'd just get to the bottom of get nip that in the bud straight away and see what's what. Mate, it niggles me every day now. I know it's me. <laughs> so let's rewind a little bit then. So so for the people that might not know who you are, mate, introduce yourself, where you're from and that kind of stuff. Yeah, my name is Nick Tudor. I am from the East Yorkshire seaside town of Bridlington. Uh, I'm 52 years old. I first started playing... My brother got me, I tried acoustic guitar at primary school. I went to one of them guitar lessons. And um, I just really, people might say, well, you're still crap at it now. But I, I sat, sat down, this kid's like putting his fingers like, like geez. And I was like, what the what? <laughs> Duplicating fingers to do that? What's that about? And then I left it. And then in 1989, my brother for my birthday bought me a black and white strap copy. And I was like, this is me. And I couldn't tune it. I didn't know what strings were what. Yeah. And I didn't have an amp. But that was me then. Mm. It was like, right, it's got me. Because it is, you, you'll know yourself, mate, it's a bug. Yeah. Once the music's in you, yeah. it'll leave you when you're in that box and you're dead. Yeah. Yeah. If it means something to you. And it means uh, it's everything. Um, but yeah, I've got that. And then... Just started trying to get all my mates were always in bands at school, and I wasn't. I always played. I was in goal. I've been a, I've been a goalkeeper for like forty three years, yeah. and I was always in goal. So when they they were always like the weirdos that were in little practice rooms. <laughs> Look at that goon on drums. Who's he? Look at him on bass. How is his bass looks like Matt King or something like that. <laughs> so it's just stuff like that. And then then he, I went to see them live, and I was like, wow. Nice. That's ace. I want to do that. And then, yeah, I started to, so as soon as I could string sort of two or three chords together, it was like, right, start to uh, write my own stuff. And it's been like that ever since. So I, I can remember having chats with you around what, you know, trying to, being from Bridlington mm. and how difficult it is being from Bridlington to, to, yeah. to, to, to get gigs for original music. Because I know you've told me before in the past, it's a seaside town. So obviously there's a big, uh, there's a big call for cover bands and that kind of stuff in pubs because it's for tourists yeah. uh, and that kind of stuff. So talk us through your struggle with like being from Bridlington and trying to break out of it. Yeah, I think um, we had um, my first band, The Sonnet, who were going from like 96 to 2012. Mm. Um, I worked sort of denying. We chased it. We were after it. I wanted a deal yeah, because that, that, that was it then. It's not like coming out the back of... Yeah, at 96, so you're coming ass end of Britpop, aren't you? Mm. And your guitars were still sort of prominent then. But towards the late 90s into the early 2000s, it was boy bands. Yeah. And it was five good-looking lads going, mm, 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 and five good-looking lasses dancing as well. Mm. That was the thing then, because you'll know yourself, mate, music comes in cycles. Guitars are in, then they're not. Then yeah. they're in, then they're not. <laughs> and as we were chasing it, I always thought we were good enough Mm. We used to go to London a lot. We played all over the country. Um, we used to go to London a lot because that's where you had to go. Yeah. Um, because there's always somebody in there, A and R or whatever. Um, so we'd go down there, and uh, I just, I just loved it. But I, yeah, we we lost track of. We ended up splitting up because we. I got so I pretty much got so focused on getting that deal. Mm. We lost sight of why we were doing it. Right. And it's the enjoyment of playing live and it's the enjoyment of, I've never been a big fan of rehearsing, but um, certainly love writing. And uh, yeah, we just, we'd, we'd go down there a lot and we got to the point where it got so focused on having to get this deal, we ended up splitting up. 
Yeah. Because like this isn't enjoyable anymore. So I think we maybe had to take a little bit of a step back. But I, when I take a step back, it lasts about three minutes, then we're on with the next thing. Mm. That's yeah. just the way I am. Yeah, I can imagine because uh, I, I was speaking to some previous guests about uh, it was with Will from Marseille recently, and he said he, he still feels like he needs to go to London. But it, is, yeah. is it still as important, London, as what it used to be? I'm <laughs> not too sure that it is, because just because how the, in, the industry is, uh, I suppose. Um, yeah. Gone are the days you're going to get a deal from somebody spotting you at a gig, a random gig, I, I think. Yeah, I don't think it happens anymore, does it? They 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 I, all just I, pick I a band watch. out online, don't they, and 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 try and get a vibe from that kind of stuff rather than having to go yeah. out. I suppose. Yeah, I did watch the the podcast that we, we will on it, yeah. and um, I understood everything he said. I did, um, and they are the young kids, aren't they? Yeah. Young lads. Yeah. So I think a lot happens on your phone now, mm. and I think that attitude of um, if it's there used to be, I think the last band, and I'm not not a big fan of them, but I think the last band that went out, that I know of, that went out and grafted and got where they are today through pure graft was the Sherlock's. Mm. Because what were they doing over 200 and odd gigs a year? Yeah. That's graft. Mm. Now you get you will get bands that are represented by certain promoters who will do six gigs a year. Mm. But something big's coming, and it's just another gig at the shit and shovel. Because mm. this promoter, in a lot, from what I've heard anyway, um, right, you're with us, you're on our roster, but you'll play about five or six times a year. Mm. Uh, go break yourself. Yeah. You're going to do it. If you really want to do it, go break yourself. Don't wait for some shit house behind a laptop. Yeah. Like, or wait for this next email and to just let us have these next three gigs. What, and then it's another eight months before your next three gigs. That's not been in a band. That's yeah. a hobby. Yeah. Don't break yourself. I think there's too many, I don't know, probably get myself into bother, but fuck it, I'm 52. What, I'm not after a fucking deal, ram it. Um, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, there's too many, I don't know, I, I've always been a fan of graft. Yeah. Like, which you put me on that list, didn't you? Mm. Absolutely blown away with that, mate. But mm. um, go break yourself. Don't wait for somebody to do it. You don't have to put the little logo at the bottom of, the, of your poster to prove how fucking good you are. Mm. You go show people how good you are. Don't wait for people to do it for you. You well, you, you do have to. You have to yeah you, you have to pretend you're a pro- professional band and just go out and gig, don't you, for, for other people to notice and people yeah. people will notice when you graft. Yeah, Cause, completely. Because they can't ignore you because you're grafting. You're going for it. Yeah. And if things are popping up, like, you know, like on Twitter and Facebook and stuff, or we're playing here, and you're like, I only played last Thursday. Mm. I've got another two this week as well. That's graft. Yeah. To me, graft isn't putting, I've got this new one, and you sat in your kitchen and everybody underneath commenting saying, Oh, that's class, man. When clearly it's shit. <laughs> it's shit. <laughs> but you've got all your mates jumping on it going, This is the best thing I've heard. It's shit. You're flat as fuck and your guitar's out of tune. Yeah. Right? This ain't gonna win me many mates, but like I say, mate, <laughs> no, it, it's the it's the it's the real world, isn't it? You know, pr- pray for your friends and your family, particularly in the early stages of you being in a band when it's only your friends and family that are coming to see you, and everybody's yeah. telling you you're great. Yeah, it, you've got to get out of that mind space because it's 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 not the real world, is it? No, because you need somebody almost to go. Um, it ain't very good, bud. Yeah. Really, I thought it was this. You're like, no, it's not. Mm. My mum will always. I mean. I'll release the shittiest thing going. My mum will love that as well. She's <laughs> glad she's not on Twitter. You know what I mean? But they do, you do surround yourself. You need to get out. It's like you say, that family and friends bubble yeah. and just go play over there and they'll tell you if it's good or not. And go to a pub or a club and play to three people. They'll tell you if it's good enough or not. Mm. You know what I mean? I've played to bar staff before. Mm. But um, it's tough out there, mate. Yeah, it's really it's really tough, but it's how much you want at the end of the day. But you you've seen a lot of um, young bands at the moment that will maybe have a go at it for three or four years and say, "Well, mm. it's not for us." We we we, we put in the in the in the tips for this year for bands to say, try and make a decision as early as you can whether it's going to be a hobby or a career, because because mm. the amount of effort you've got to put into it if you're going it for a career. It's going to be a thankless task. You're going to lose money. You're going to play to. You're going to play to bar staff. You're going to. 
you're going to do yeah. all of those things and um you've just got to go through that process before you start picking up little pockets of fans all over the country you just yeah just, you've got, them, again, got to make that decision to do it or, or yeah, it's and, and you can play to your mates and let them tell you everything's fucking great and it is it just boils down to graft mm. and it is as well it's playing on a tuesday night in sheffield yeah. and going to the apartment in leeds mm. on a monday night and you're second on that's graft yeah. and coming back and knowing full well you're going to be knackered in the morning because you're at work yeah that's graft. Mm. I've said this story before when we used to go to London a lot. We'd try and book three, four, maybe five nights on the trot, try and get everybody at the same sort of space where we were um, all on holiday. But sometimes as well, we'd um, we'd all be at graft the next day. So we'd say, right, we're in London, we're second on, um, and we're all back at work the next day. And you actually knackered, but that's graft. Mm. You know what I mean? It's not waiting for that announcement on your phone for somebody that might put you on. It's actually sticking your stuff in the van and the car and mm. doing it. What's, yeah. what's Bridlington like these days for, for up-and-coming bands and that kind of stuff? Has it, has it got better or has it stayed the same or is it any worse than uh, back um, in the- I mean, with, with this, you've heard of the Hilda. Mm. Yeah? So I've known Danny and Matty since they were like, this big so i'm just thinking i mean there's there's edge of 13 who are like sort of like my age so but i know the hilda are going for it they want to do something and they are good enough i just i always regularly kick their ass i say don't play i know they've had a lot of bad luck drummers but that's the thing in brid there's about 15 musicians but they're already in 36 bands you can't get them to commit to your band. So the Hilders have a lot of bad luck as regards drummers and guitarists and stuff. I think they're just about to get another guitarist in. But I know they're going to go for it, and they are good enough. But I say to them, I say, go go play, go graft, go do the gigs on Mondays and Fridays and Thursdays and Sundays and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like I said before, mate, it's a very it's a cover-orientated thing. It's like the punters want to see, they want to hear Mustang Sally. Yeah, <laughs> they want to hear that because it makes people dance, and if people are dancing, it means the tills rattling and the landlord's happy. Yeah. So I've always understood both sides. That side has never appealed to me. I would rather write my own stuff and mm. play to the caretaker. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I, I did have the pleasure of going to Bridlington last year to that this feeling gig mm. at, at the spa, and yeah. I've always had a, an affinity to Bridlington. I used to go there as a kid every year yeah. and stuff. So I, I, I do like the little town. Uh, yeah. I, I like the vibe of it. It's 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 it's, it's a nice space and 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 for this feeling to bring to set up something completely new and put up and coming bands on with established bands at the Bridlington Spa is just fantastic for that area. It was it was my probably my favorite weekend the last weekend. Uh, yeah, yeah. When I when I went when I went to that gig, it it was just so good. You know, the Lathams, Red Rum Club, all the all these big established bands. Yeah. Of, you know, uh, with, with up and coming bands, it was just, it. Uh, everybody just loved Bridlington. It, it was great. But uh, how many venues is there there for a band to to play Bridlington away from the Sparks? Obviously, that's a massive venue type thing. Yeah, there's a great place for Paul Town called Black Lion. Yeah. It's great, mate. The vent, if you ever, have you ever seen pictures of it? I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'll have a look. It's ridiculous. You go through the door, and you just don't expect it. Yeah, it's it's huge. You get well, you get two hundred and fifty in it. Oh. It should be, and I know James up there, James and Alex do a lot of graph. I said you've got to get this place on the circuit instead mm. of people just going to York and Leeds. Yeah. They might want a little trip out to Seaside one night. If you can get that on the circuit, mint. But I think, in ways like, I think they're under tied to some respect because. The landlord is sort of like, well, original bands don't bring people in. Mm. If people are in, nobody's drinking. If they're not drinking, you're not getting paid. Yeah. So I think the sort of hands are tied to a degree, mm. but it's a great space. I mean, they used to do gigs at Queen's as well, not so much, mm. but the only place really in Britain is Black Lion. It's a proper mint venue, mate. Massive front of house set up, yeah. good desk, great stage. And um, yeah, it's like two hundred and I think you get two hundred and fifty in there, but yeah, it's a good spot. Bit business um, landlords seem to be fucking wiping out these music venues with all their 
the uh, rent fees and increasing stuff and making things difficult for music venues. It's yeah, it, it, it's it's. I've I've seen a couple of venues you know close down recently. There was one in Bath that closed down and another one that that left me. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, so they are. That's two, and we're only in. We're only in fucking halfway through January, and that's two gone. Yeah. Off year. Um, they, don't, they don't seem to bat an eyelid at it as well. It's like yeah. it's it's part of a fabric of the community as well. Yeah. It's a hub. It's where people come. And fair dues, you might not have. It may be. I mean, that Bath Moors. I think. Do you want to get about hundred in there? Hundred nod. I've not been to it personally. I've I've heard well, that, that place was yeah. place was iconic. Yeah. Um, like all the big bands that like the Smiths, the best band in the world ever. Like they play like. Cure and stuff like that. They sort of started around there, and it's just like, oh yeah, Moles has gone, and that's it. Yeah. We, it's, I mean, it destroys like the the people that work there. Yeah. But they do, these venues, you, you, I mean, you'll read Twitter yourself, mate. It's like, oh, so and so's gone under as well. Yeah. So and so's gone under. Or somebody will move next to a venue and they'll moan about the noise. And what? Don't moan, move next to the venue then. <laughs> that just absolute balls you piss. That shit. <laughs> Oh, it didn't night and day have that. Yeah, it's still humbling. I don't. I don't think it's been decided yet. I think. I think they'll be all right from the rumors I'm hearing, but. Right. Uh, yeah, it's just caused them so much ed- uh, asshole and edit. Yeah, yeah. But th- these, 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 you're right. Th- these places are part of a community. They're part of. They're just not used enough. No. So, no, so yeah. we've all as people got to take responsibility for not when we can't put all the pressure on ourselves for not going out every night because that's not uh, possible either. But you know, it, it is it is a case of using them or losing them. It, as well, I've got. I mean, you were on about you went last year to Bridge Spa. You know how great a venue Bridge Spa is. Yeah, Mate, shockingly underused. Mm. We mm. used to. Get, you've got Scarborough up there theatre. Mm. We've just booked corn. You know what I mean? The book Corn, for God's sake. Scarborough up there, and I know I've spoke to a few people who say, well, they've got a bigger budget. So you used to get, a few years ago, you, you'd get, you'd get like Kasabian and Weller and all them lot. They'd come. They'd never got Scarborough. Scarborough was, but then Scarborough up near theatre popped up. They'd get them all. I mean, it's not my pick, but like Britney Spears and Britney and all them lot go to um, Scarborough now. They won't come to Brit. Mm. Um, uh, I just, I mean, they spent twenty-two and a half million on Bridge Spa a few years ago, and what they got next? Tea dances, magic mic sessions for the kids. It's just like, nah, it's too good a venue. It's too nice a venue with too much history for it to be sat idle, and it yeah. pretty much is. And when we do get a sort of a decent named act coming, mm. it's almost like they sit back and rest on the laurels. Oh, well, we got so and so last October. You're like. And now, come on, we need somebody else. Yeah. It's too nice that place to be sat empty. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful venue. Really nice. Yeah, great. Uh, and, 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 and I'm going to go, we should go for a pint. We should go to it next year. Well, this year now. Be, yeah, well, I couldn't yeah. go last year because I was uh, getting married. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, any excuse. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry, mate, I couldn't go. You'd have killed me. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> So, um, so Sonic and so Sonic kind of broke up. You know, you you lost a love for it. How did you, how did you react to that? And what did you do in the following months yourself, following the breakup of the band? Uh, I think straight away, as soon as I come out of something, I w- I would love to. I, I say I would love to just sort of like kick back and go. I have a year off. Yeah. But you ask Sarah, my wife. I can't sort of switch off. I'm absolute like Zebedee. I'm like, next thing, next thing, next thing. It's like, just calm down. You're like, I can't, I've got to do something again. So I think coming out of Sonic, so that was 2012. Uh, did I do out solo? I'm not a big fan of playing solo acoustic, mate, because it's just, he's shit in it. <laughs> He's got like, you've got really good singer songwriters out there and you you watch some of them and you're like, world class. Yeah. amazing they're like singing all dancing amazing voices and you're like wow that's other level stuff but i don't know i'd do it because i would rather be behind an electric guitar yeah. but because of the crap that the electric guitar brings it'll have to be an acoustic and just try and sort of write as well as you can but yes after the sonnet maybe a few gigs on me todd and then we did page 45. When did page 45? Page 45 was 2015 okay. till 
God, got dementia. But it, it's hard to remember everything. I know what you mean. I, I first knew you from page 45. Mm. Um, so, because that's when we had you on it at Washington in Sheffield, weren't it? When you brought a truck yeah. over and they all yeah. had drink and that, and it were a big, big, weird booze boozy do weren't it that night down at Washington? yeah we had yeah we just brought a coach didn't we i think it was, yeah. was it about 25 in the coach yeah, or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah it was a good day i think that particular day i think we played two gigs because we played at a match of the mods thing oh, in york yeah so we played sort of like at two o'clock then i think it was on at washington at something like eight so but no that was great it's just nice to get out and play different places because you can get sort of stuck in your waist can't you say oh, i just play rig yeah but um it's not for the want of trying to get out. But yeah, just at page 45. And then again, with page 45, it's just like revolving members. Yeah. It's um, drummer's gone, bass player's gone, bass, new bass player, a new drummer. And then just because you're the constant there, it's like you're, you're relearning the songs again, even though you know them. And it eats away into the enthusiasm you have for the songs because it's killing it. Yeah. No, it goes to D there. Oh, God, no, there's a role there. And you're like, God, get me out of this shit. And then I always said if page 45 split up, um, I'd go on my own. I'd sell all my gear. Yeah. And that's what I ended up doing. I just, because I'd have that, I'd have my AC30 for like um, 20, 22 years. Is that that posh cream I, one? No, no, it was a black one. Like was, was it a Rick and Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I made Rick and Backer, yeah. I got rid. I got rid. <laughs> I'd wanted a Rickenbacker since I was about like sixteen, okay. and then I got one. I think I had about two years. It's either that or Pete Towns in the fucking thing. <laughs> so yeah, I got rid of my Vox, my AC30. Got me rid of my Rickenbacker. I had a casino as well. I thought if I get rid of everything, I can't be tempted back into it right. because I do all I all I need is. Um, oh, hang on! I've skipped right past my solo band, huh? Go on. Yeah, it's all right. We can we, so we can go wherever we want. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Right. Yeah, so after page forty-five, I got um, I got a, a a message out the blue from a bass player. He said, uh, "Have you thought about putting a band together?" And I thought, "Well, I think about nothing but." Yeah. And he said, "Well, I play bass." I thought, "Hey, up here we go. The itchy's back. So let's start scratching." And he goes, "I might know a drummer." I went. Here we go. And I've always been in three pieces, so it's always been a lot of pressure to sing and be like Clapton and all. But he goes, I might know a lead guitarist. as well. I went, wow. He goes, let's have a get-together. We had a get-together, and then I thought, this is great. It's great. So it goes, well, what do you want to do? Do you want it just to be page 45? And he says, no, just call it the Nick Tudor band. I went, what? He goes, yeah, it's your band, isn't it? Be your songs. Just do that. I thought, right, fair do. It's great stuff. And then I think we rehearsed for about eight months and it's right and this is all right so gigs started coming in and then about four or five months into gigs he went oh, i don't write fancy anymore okay. <laughs> yeah. so i'm like are people just trying to fucking wind me up or what? <laughs> so that was it mate and then with that it just all breaks up again and they're like right now i'm going to sell my gear because I can't do this shit anymore. It's almost like people are laughing. Hey, up Tudes, band's gone tits <laughs> up again. And after a while, it's like you get sick of seeing your Facebook post of drummer wanting, band mm. wanting. And those are the only memories that are coming up on your band. Instead of mint gigs you've done or particular yeah. songs you've written, the only memories are the shit ones. Yeah. And I thought, right, sell your gear, buy a good acoustic, go play. And that's what I ended up doing, mate. Did you ever get rid of that scooter? Yeah, it broke me out. <laughs> I can remember seeing the post on your social media and that. Getting rid Absolutely of that. Broke me out, mate. Absolutely okay. broke me out. I think I will get a scooter again one day. Okay. But um, it was in the hallway. Right. And, it was, and every, it was, because if you leave it in garages around Brid, it won't be there in the morning. Yeah. So it was in the hallway, so I thought, nice and, nice and safe. And every time we used to walk past with our, like, teens at the front <laughs> room, when we put it on our lap, Sarah would smash her hips, uh, smash her hips, smash her shins yeah. on the pit start. Yeah. And all you hear was going, this fucking scooter! <laughs> <laughs> and then one day I thought, yeah, I've got to sell it. So yeah, it's, yeah, heartbreaking, but yeah, I still love my scoots. Yeah. So the solo thing then, it, you know, it happened again. And then what? And then was it page 45, just to get the timeline a little bit? It was the sonnet, page 45. Yeah. Nick solo band. band. That's it. 
Nick Childer on his Todd. There we go. There we go. And here we are. So I've seen you do some amazing gigs, though. You know, like even supporting like Shed Seven and that kind of stuff. Amazing. Just announced the number one album. What a, what a major achievement it is for that band. Thirty years in the making. Yeah. The fucking first. I couldn't be more chuffed for them uh, yeah. to, to to get that achievement. Just it's just from having uh, Rick on the podcast a couple of times and meeting him at festivals and stuff. It's just such a nice bloke that you know I couldn't imagine anybody that deserves it more than them. Um, yeah, yeah, and that's that shows your graph done it as well. Yeah, it's that that pursuit. They won't finish now because they've got number one. It's that pursuit. We've got it right. But if anything, it will make them want to go better. Well, you say like you don't want to re release mediocre stuff and just stay that. They'll want to say, right, everybody loves that album. It's shit hot. Let's yeah. go better next time. Let's get another number one. But yeah, they deserve it completely. I mean, last year when um, there's a a promoter from York called Tim Ormsby. It was great. He's always been great with me. And um, he just said, uh, would you like to support Rick and Paul? Because like, I'd supported the band in 2017 when that Instant Pleasures come out mm. at York and went down all right. It was great. Great night. And I was on my top then as well. And um, yeah, he just said, do you want to support them? They're playing at um, Welly in Hull. So that'd be great. Brilliant. Amazing. Thank you. And so I think there was 700 in that night. No, 600 in that night. And, um, and then few weeks past and he says they're playing at Birdwell in Barnsley as well do you want that one and all I'm like wow so I went there and there was 700 in that night and it's nice you, you just pick you can see your new followers on your timeline yeah. oh, I saw you at Birdwell I thought you were great I saw you at Welly I thought you were great brilliant so always appreciative of people sort of offering you gigs especially gigs like that mate because they don't come around that often do they well, well I've just seen like since going solo it just seems like you've got you've got this second third fourth wind <laughs> six, six, seven, win. <laughs> all, all the wins uh yeah. and it, it just seems to be like you seem to be settling into a good routine of solid gigs now and yeah. um, and it, that's how it feels anyway you you tell me i think you you, you put it right in um in your when i was on that grafters list you put, he yeah. seems to have found his lane yeah. i probably have mm. I, I was maybe always a four key <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah. But just, I mean, it's it's like I said, mate, it's easier to um, confirm a gig in seconds when you're on your own. Yeah. When you're on a band, for some reason, it takes a week. Then you're getting back in touch with the promoter and the gig's gone. Snooze, you lose. Yeah. So if somebody says, can you do the 17th of June? I go, yeah. And then I look at the calendar later. Yeah. If it's on a Tuesday, so what? I'll still come. Because yeah. um, I just, I still love, I just still love playing live. Yeah. I really do. I love the, uh, and the, at this ripe old age as well, still getting a confirmation through. Like, yeah, chilled, you can have that one, mate. Yeah. I still get a buzz. And I think as soon as that, when that goes, I'll know then, right, get rid of your acoustics because it's done. But I'm not 17, but at 52, when so, and I had one this week, it's been, it's been all right. I think I've got, I've got 13 gigs booked in this year. I'm after 50 if I can. That's what I want to do. Um, but, yeah, just still getting the gig confirmation. It's still like a massive buzz. And and they're, they're all out of Bridlington as well. You're, you know, they're, they're happening all over. And, and, like, major support slots as well, aren't they, you know? Yeah, well, I, I mean, just through the week from Kev at Our Sound Music, he, um, to get, uh, like, a record junkie in Sheffield. Um, never been there. I've heard, I've heard about it. He said, do you want to support Mark Morris? And you're like, absolutely, I do. Of course I do. It's amazing. Like, just there's a few I can't announce as well because the bands are still going to announce it as part of whatever they're doing. So I can, there's a few I can't say, but just it's like I said, I'll promote, I'll play a gig with Dave Smith. I'll also play with Shed Seven. It's not like I, I just love gigging. Mm. So, well, it, it shines through, and you know your enthusiasm for it has never waned all these years that I've known about you, mate. And I just, I just think it's great. And what I did like to see the other day were you were writing a song with your son. That must have been a nice experience. Amazing, because my, for those that don't know my son, he's, um, he's a producer. He's only 19, but he's making stupid money working yeah. with... Because rappers don't tend to write their music. Yeah. They'll they'll write the rhymes and they'll do the the raps and what have you. So he writes music and he's been. This is a kid that wouldn't go to Aldi for a pint of milk. Who's now been to America five times in a year. Lazy little git. So 
he's going back to America again next month and he's he does all these loops and beats and I've got this new song. I thought I want to try something different. I don't want it that Nick Tudor bandy sort of sound. Uh, I can hear some different beats on it. And I just asked him. He tried to charge me the tight little gear. I said, I'll fill your tea. That's all you get. Because what's the going rate, Dad? I went, you can ram it, pal. Um, so I went upstairs and he knocked something up in about seven minutes. He was like dragging this and pulling that. I said, no, I need that snare to sound like this. He goes, what about that one? I goes, yeah, yeah, that. He says, I need a paddy sound for this, blah, 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 blah. And he goes, what about that? And he put it together. And I went, that's how easy, isn't it? And it is to him. I'd love to be able to do all that recording at home. If I did that recording at home, I'd probably have a single out every month. <laughs> yeah. I haven't I ain't got the knowledge. Um, but yeah, to work with Finn last night, my boy, it's like that's huge to me. And that's really lovely as well. Yeah. Because you can go to some studios and you don't know them and you're paying through the teeth for it. So to just sit in, I mean, I rarely get into his bedroom anyway. It's like, what do you want? <laughs> so so to go in there and sort of like dragging and pulling that sort of stuff and just to come up with that last night was just yeah it was lovely mate it was a nice moment so how, how did he get like into you know blagging going to america to to do music how, how did he it, get into that well let's just say he's done more in about two years of music than i've done in 32 <laughs> Little gips. he started i've spoke to his um music teacher as well at school and she said finn started on garage band Right. And he was always he was always really good on Garage Band. He says there was kids that struggled with it, and um, Finn sort of clicked took, clicked like straight away with that. And he says he went really advanced with Garage Band, and he started getting different things, plugins and all that sort of stuff for his laptop. And then he got he's got introduced to this group of producers in America called Solo in Dawn. And they're based in New York, but the lads are all over America, and Finn's part of this. There's 13 of them. Finn's the only one from Europe. So they're all in America. So first time he went over, he went over to Atlanta. And I was shitting it. Because it's like, my boy's my boy's 18. He's off to Atlanta on his own. And he was just like... I, I, would just, I was just getting pissed in a park at 18. There you go. And he's off to Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's how I says, text me when you get there. Text me when you have a shit. Text me when you go to the shop. Text me when you do... And he's like, Dad, Dad, just chill out a bit. I'm fine. I'm here. And... He's loved it, and he's been to Los Angeles since, New York twice, and the planning again, um, going again next month. He's going for three weeks, and he's just he had this. There's this rapper in America called Summers, and the idea is with these they send music out, and if the rappers like it, they'll use it. And he's got he's got five songs on this rapper's album, which is huge. His money should be coming in soon with any luck. And the person that's actually looking after my boy's account, Finn Tudor from Bridlington, is the person that looks after Guns N' Roses and Billie Eilish's accounts. Oh. My mum does my accounts. <laughs> 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 but yeah, he's he's gone like that. And he's still really, he's really quiet. He's really shy. He's really humble. Like me, Cal, you know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's real, so he's real quiet. And it's like, Oh, get some photos when you're when you're when you're in America, son. He's like, no, dad, because you'll just put them on Facebook. I'm like, that's what dads do. They're proud <laughs> of the kids. I said, this is my boy on Brooklyn Bridge and stuff like that. He's like, no, dad, I don't want you to do that. So I've got photos, but he won't let me put them on. But I said, I'm like, just like super proud of you. When he went to LA, I was like, Los Angeles, you can't even go to Filey. And he's off to about Los Angeles. And it's just like amazing. He's like, he's other level now, he's Finn. Lovely kid, great kid, lazy little git. But it's it's like I said as well, the five songs that you got on that rapper's album, um, how long did it take you to do all five beats? He said about an hour. Wow. And they're like, what they'll do is they send it out to the rappers and say, I want to use that. Say, right, what's the going rate? Well, it's $5,000 for a song, or it's three grand, or it's eight grand. And that's what the accountants are working out now so yeah he could be in with a little bit of a moolah soon bonus so so he got all his talent from his dad then did he <laughs> i said i went in once man this is this is the kids of today i i heard him outside his bedroom i was shouting him up for his tea and he, he had headphones on so he couldn't hear me so i got my guitar and i, I was listening outside and i thought that's a load of shit that music that's not music son so i walked in i goes 
Son, what you need on here is a bit of guitar. He says, Dad, nobody plays guitar anymore. Get out. <laughs> yeah. Our times have changed. People oh, do. Sorry, mate. Yeah. People do. They do, though, don't they? Guitar. They do, mate. They do. They're doing this house. Yeah. yeah. They're doing this. So, yeah, just last night, just knocking about. Nice. And yeah. Put a nice bit to it. So, yeah, it sounds great. Sounds good. Nice one. Nice one. So, what's coming up for? Uh, for Tudes, then uh, I know you've got some gigs that you can't announce yet. Fair enough. Mm. Um, what's the plan uh, for this year apart from gigs? What? What? How do you want to? How do you? What would be a perfect year for you coming up? Well, I wasn't planning on recording this year because I've done them five singles last okay. year, and it's I, just to take a bit of heat off Paul. Paul was um, he used to be a bass player in Page Forty Five as well, and he records all of this stuff. And I thought five songs. Um, and it's a lot of work for him because there's a lot of mixing and you're mixing by email. No, I actually need to be allowed all that sort of crap. And I thought, I'll leave him alone for the year. I won't record. And I got, <laughs> I got about four days in January. And I says, hey, mate, I've got a new one. He goes, let's do it, brother. <laughs> but I don't think the idea is to record much. Yeah. But I'm going to, uh, I think it's back end of February, first week of March, we're going to go do this new one. But it's just to play live as much as possible, mate. Yeah. And if it is in Leeds or it's in Brighton or if it's in Scotland, so be it. If I can get there, I'll do it. But that's it. Minimal record, min minimal recording, but lots of gigs. Yeah. I'll be 13 in the diary, but I want, I want a lot more yet. But we'll see how it goes. Well, I, I just love seeing the enthusiasm in you, mate. Uh, I love... Uh, I love your journey. I love everything about you. I think you're great. I think I love how honest you are with stuff as well, which is, uh, I don't see enough honesty out there in the world at the minute. No. Particularly in the music industry. It's got all, it's, it's gotten a bit safe. It's gone a bit, blah, it's got a bit boring, hasn't it? It's, it has. You've got a, uh, I mean, you, of course you, you want to help people. Of course you do. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate anything if, but I've, I've said, I appreciate any sort of gig or any bit of help anybody's ever given me. I mean, you didn't have to give us those gigs in Sheffield and Manchester. Always been appreciative. We sort of like, we got on straight away as well, didn't we? Um, but you, you're going to, there's a lot of, I don't know, the world's pretty crappy at the moment anyway, isn't it? But the, you can hope, be. Hopefully the way the world is and it creates some angry people with a message to put into music yeah. on, the, on the other side of it. Hopefully that can, that yeah. can and and, yeah. I, and I'm really glad everybody's not brought out a fucking album about COVID. I was scared of that. Oh, <laughs> see, that's one of my things is that you get, you tend to get asked that question. So what were you doing in a lockdown? You're yeah. like, I don't want to talk about it <laughs> at <laughs> all. Yeah. I don't, cause it's just, we're blaming everything on that now. We just, right, it's time, yeah. time to crack on that. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. want to see a picture of your positive test on fucking Facebook. Yeah. Why are you still testing your dick? You know what I mean? It's like put, burn your tests. But just seen other people. Just seen other people do it, and they've got COVID and think, "Oh, I'm just going to do what other people do." Yeah, it's, I it's tested, too much, I it's too much of that as well. Yeah, I'm, I've not tested for years, and I'm not going to test if I get ill. It's probably just the shits anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Too much fish and chips down Bridlington Spa. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. So uh yeah, thanks, mate. I, I really appreciate and enjoyed catching up with you today, mate, and joining us on the podcast. It's very much appreciated. Um, we're gonna put a link to uh all of your stuff online so people can find you and check your tunes and check where you're playing and that kind of stuff. So if hey, people are hovering over that link at the minute and they're not pressed it yet, what would you say to them? Get it clicked. So you send me all your hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, did, did you stop going on Spotify and that kind of stuff? Did you move to Bandcamp then recently? That's what I'm going to ask you. Yeah, I went, but I mean, mate, you know what I was like setting up this chat. I'm a, I'm a bit, yes. I'm absolutely shanked. <laughs> so what I thought, because I got, people kept asking, well, are you on Bandcamp? I was like, do you know what? I'm going to set it up myself. Yeah. And I did, and I went, I can't go drag these songs across. Because I've got a mate that does it, but yeah. I don't like bugging people all the time because I, I'm just crap at stuff like that. Okay. But I did set the band camp up, but then there's no songs on it. But I am on Spotify. I don't use Spotify. No, I don't. I, pre I prefer um, Apple. If it's. Yeah. But it's on all them lot. If people, and just, uh, yeah. just lately, there's been a weird surge of like monthly listeners. Right. Well, that's because, isn't it? It went nuts because I'd be like on 60 monthly listeners forever. 
And all of a sudden, it went to 1,372. I'm like, woo hoo So it was, it was, it was ravaged as well, because, I mean, I think I only just heard, as well, apparently, you can pay, can't you, to get on playlists? Yes. Yeah. Which, I which, is, which is illegal, I think. Oh, is it? Well, well you, you can't charge people to put, uh, legally, you can't charge people to put you on the p- p- playlist. Mm. So on, right. on, on on RGM's website, you know, because we, we advertise that we'll we'll playlist a song as part of some of our packages, but we put a disclaimer on it that we're not charging you to be on the playlist. We're charging for the work to promote the playlist and to all that kind yeah. of to, to, like you know, that's how yeah. it needs to be. Um, yeah. But um, but uh, yeah, just just on you know paying for stuff like Spotify playlists and stuff like that. I don't, I don't, I don't get all that side of it. I, I understand why people do it because they want to show off that they've got bigger numbers. I just don't. Yeah. I just don't see the real value in it. It's, it's not really gonna get you much unless you're doing a million, which I suppose you can pay for a million views on whatever you want these days, can't you? But what good will it really do you? Because I, I see a lot of people. What do you know when them uh, Spotify rap things come out and everybody yeah. puts all that bullshit out? Uh, yeah. And and there's a lot of people like uh, <laughs> there's a lot of people talking about. Uh, other bands bands will always talk about other band stats and and wonder why they're higher than theirs and all that kind of stuff yeah. um but w- when you see them they can't sell a ticket anywhere but they've got these thousands of fans that listen to the music is it real exactly. or not yeah and we've been played in 6085 countries yeah. like, hang on but you can't sell out your local pub yeah yeah, yeah it's a bit of being it yeah so yeah just for that t- i knew when i had 60 monthly listeners they were genuine so all of a sudden to get to like 1,372, yeah. I'm like, what the hell is going on? How much does that is cost that, you? I've got no budget to play with. Oh, so I, I was just going to say, how much does that cost you to get to 1,600? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we just keep plodding on, mate. Yeah. Just keep okay. doing yeah, all keep this. On. Click the link. Click that the link. link. Check the tunes. Tunes, mate. Uh, really enjoyed catching up with you, mate. Uh, your chair's not turned up. That's that's worked out all right. I know you've got. Uh, I know you. I know you've got a delivery due soon. Uh, <laughs> hopefully that goes well for you. And yeah, yeah. Thanks for joining us again. And I wish you all the, all the best, bud. Nice one. Bless you, mate. Cheers. <laughs>